After a winter of planning, Daryl and I embarked on our third annual Lake Diefenbaker Windrider experience. This time there were five Windriders making the Elbow Run 2015. We journeyed to Elbow to our launch site at Tufts Bay on Lake Diefenbaker. With sunshine and warm weather, spirits were high. The three new recruits soon discovered the challenge of packing camping gear and enough water and food to last a week on board a 17-foot trimaran. Each found ways of making the best use of the capacity that these wind riders have. It was mid-afternoon before our boats were in the water, and with a decent wind we were on our way. Our group was a real motley crew, as Dave says. Uh, Rod, I don't know how you managed to get five guys together. I mean, one person out of Redbury having his boat up there, you and another person that have been sailing for a couple of years, and then having uh, Rick out of Elbow uh, come with us. None of us knew each other, and to get us to uh, commit to five days uh, sailing and camping with people we don't know, but know that we have one thing in common, and that is we love our wind riders, and we love to sail. It looked like a challenge. I'd never been on a lake that big before with um, my sailboat. And the fact that we were gonna be sailing down the lake and camping out every night, to me, seemed like one heck of a challenge. It seemed like something that I wanted to do. I seen the, uh, the blog on the uh, Windrider site and uh, happened to correspond with my days off at work and I was more than happy to go. I used to sail with some people uh, with the boat. I'm fairly new to it. With our late start, the evening closed in on us quicker than we wanted. The winds had started brisk, but had tapered off. Rick suggested that we try a sheltered coulee that he had seen on previous sails on the lake. Shadows were growing as we motored into the coulee, only to find out that, due to an eight-foot drop in the level of the lake over the previous year, it would not be suitable. David scouted the opposite side of the lake, and as the sun reached the horizon, we motored over there and selected a place to camp for the night. Tents were set up quickly, and our first supper was cooked in the dark. We were up early on Monday morning. Rick had already demonstrated his fire-making skills the night before, and soon he had coffee perking on the beach. After breakfast, we headed out. The eastern sky confirmed the forecast that we had been watching and discussing for a week. A significant storm was headed our way and would arrive sometime in the evening with rain accompanied by winds forecast to gust to 94 kilometers per hour. We knew that before the day was over, we had to find a suitably sheltered location to hunker down until the storm had passed us by. Rick knows this part of the lake, and we were confident that we would find a very good campsite. Exploring the lake, I, I knew a bit of the lake closer to home, it's a long lake, it's uh, about 150 miles long. Um, usually always wind, it's good. It was a good lake to be on. We started the day off quite close together. And at one point, it seemed that we were sailing in formation. The lake level was down by eight vertical feet from the previous two years. And as a result, Daryl and I could not recognize much of the shoreline.
we encountered the Riverhurst Ferry as it pulled away from the south shore. This created a bit of excitement for Ken and Daryl, who were the closest to it. The ferry is pulled across the lake on underwater cables that can tangle boats if they get too close. We all passed by without incident, and we carried on our way past the Palliser Regional Park. After a brief stop at Rusty's Marina for a few supplies, we headed to a cove that looked like it would offer us shelter from the oncoming storm. We soon fell in love with Cowpaddy Cove. Many of the hills surrounding the lake provide pasture for herds of cattle. There was adequate evidence that we were not the first inhabitants of our cove. Dave joined Rick in lighting the first fire using that evidence as fuel. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you think our uh, our fire is full of shit, it is. This <laughs> yeah. going to be a good fire. Rick's pyretic skills, along with his jokes and stories, were a perfect way to set the scene as we hunkered down on Monday evening. It wasn't long before we were settled in, swapping stories and discussing the day's events. The ominous sky did not dampen our enthusiasm. We were enjoying the camaraderie and the campfire too much for that to happen. Well, and you know what? Toast to you, because you're the one that's doing yeah. it. Here. Yeah. You, you bet, Rod. You bet. The system arrived just as had been predicted. Rain started shortly after we turned in for the night and the wind steadily increased in intensity. However, we were all in good shape in the shelter of Cowpotty Cove. The boat shifted somewhat overnight, but we're still on the beach in the morning. Our tents were all standing and even the temporary tarpaulin shelter that we had constructed was holding its own. Rick built a small fire under the tarp, creating just enough heat to drive off the chilly damp weather. We spent the day getting to know each other, regaling each other with various stories, some of which may have even been true. I asked Daryl what his favorite day of the week was. I guess the most predominant day would be uh, our storm day. Although it's really hard to pick. But that was the best day, I guess, because uh, we got a, got a good chance to just sit around and eat and share some good stories and, uh, you know, it was a great sight. And a good bunch of people. So, you know, after that day, everybody was just a little tighter and had a better time, I, th I believe. Rick recalls one humorous story from that storm day. Dave uh, fighting with his tent in the wind was pretty funny. He had to hold it up. You know, there were so many highlights. I mean, the stories we had in the evening, uh, putting up a campfire, uh, us getting to know each other, uh, going through one heck of a storm. 
and surviving it. I mean, 94 kilometer an hour winds. We weren't sailing, but I mean, it was still a lot of fun. Uh, just uh, a group of people that are out to wanting to do the same thing. I mean, at all different levels, and we all helped each other, and uh, we all became not only good friends, but we under we understand our boats better. Uh, the Wind Rider is an amazing boat. I mean, they say you can't flip it. Uh, I think we come close. We tried, <laughs> but it didn't happen. By late afternoon, the rain was much lighter and the wind gusts were not quite as strong as earlier in the day. Skies were starting to clear in the west as the sun set in the evening. Sunshine, blue skies and gusting brisk winds greeted us the next morning. We took down our shelter and packed up our gear. Daryl demonstrated the quickest way to get everything to the shore in one go. Rick made a brief trip to Rusty's Marina, and when a gust almost knocked him over on his way back, he decided to reef his mainsail. We all followed suit, and once underway, we were not sorry. The winds were not as strong as the previous day, but the gusts continued with plenty of power and it made for exciting sailing. Rick set the pace for the day and I give it my best shot to catch him, but every time I thought I was gaining on him, he would just pick up and head off again. It was great fun. I asked Rick how the week's experience changed the way he sailed his boat. Well, it was an excellent weekend and I did learn lots, lots of new stuff on the boat. Uh, little tricks how to set it up the uh, uh, when we shortened our sails that was, that was good in the high winds I didn't realize how how fast it would start to start to go over it came close it was real good I was uh, very impressed on how the boat handled and, and, and drove after a couple hours of fast sailing it was time to take a breather I headed for shore and the others followed Daryl tells us what happened next. And uh, Rick, who has the really nice steering tiller uh, cables or whatever, anyways, his boat just started to back on a shore real nice, did a 180 and uh, lifted a hull and took off. <laughs> that was funny. We're all saying we were in disbelief when watching it and we but that's what happens on sailing trips and adventures. And I, and I think that's the highlight of the whole trip, not particularly that, that antidote, but the idea that it was an adventure and that anything could happen and just about everything did. The sailing was uh, far better than in, in the, say, uh, the past couple trips, just for the simple reason there was like five fold the wind, you know. Uh, again, for myself, uh, I spent most of my trip just keeping dry, so I wasn't hammering away like uh, some of the other fellows. But uh, good, every day, lots of wind. Ken also talked about the wind and his sailing. You know, when you're on the water for five, six days straight, you're tested every single moment. And we certainly had many, many tests during that, that uh, week from a a Tuesday storm to the winds before and after that uh, that storm. So to gain confidence, uh, gain support from the, the friendships uh, with my sailing skills, uh, that, that would be what I'd say I, I took away in terms of sailing. And for the rest of the day, we worked our way back past Cow Paddy Cove, and then on to another great campsite nestled in a poplar bluff back from the beach. Thank you. 
As the day closed, we were treated to another dramatic prairie sky. With scattered showers in the skyline, a rainbow appeared in the east just as the sun was going down in the west. And I always say at the end of, 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 of a day, uh, and, and things are going as good as it did for us all the way through, but for this, this whole week and every day, you know, I'd sit down and say, life just doesn't get any better than that. That's just the way it is. We awoke to another sunny day with a strong onshore wind blowing out of the northwest, making it difficult to raise our mainsails. We opted for the easy way out and motored across the lake, raised sails, keeping them reefed, and we're once again on our way for another great day of sailing. One of the highlights for me during this week was watching as each member of the group displayed his sailing skills. As Dave points out, but five guys, some that had a little bit of experience on the wind rider, some that had more experience on the wind rider, but all of us come together and we all learned so much from going on that trip. I mean, there was no question that I learned a lot about my boat and I know other people learned a lot about what I did. Everybody took away something from that five days. Ken had only sailed his boat for three hours before we started the elbow run. By the end of the week, he was cruising at the front of the pack. Dave has the most experience flying a reacher, and he loves to fly three sails to the wind. And you can always count on Dave for uh, cheers with his rum-flavored coffee. After passing near Hitchcock's hideout, it was Daryl's turn to show his finesse at the helm, and he snuck up beside Rick and squeezed on by. And there's Rick. No matter what the wind conditions are, he's clearly at home on this lake. He's a pleasure to watch sailing his boat. You know, it's interesting, five people that didn't know each other at all, and after five days of sailing, got to know each other really well because we had one thing in common, and we loved to sail, and we loved to sail our wind riders. And for that, that was just an amazing experience for me. For me, I think, it was the excitement of being able to push my and challenge my sailing skills. I'm a novice sailor, so the opportunity to sail straight for five, six days was, was there in front of me and I had to grab it. It was a wonderful learning opportunity and an and, and, and adventure. A beam reach was taking us home and it was already time to start thinking about next year. I, I know I'll go. I'm, I'm ready for next year and, and I'm hoping we can even add a couple more. I mean, there, there's nothing stopping us from having more people. What's, what's on tap for next year? Same thing, maybe bigger. Next year I'm wide open. I'm ready and waiting to go. Again, the, the friendships, the, the sense of, of challenging oneself, the sense of improving one's skills, uh, and the sense of just being outdoors in nature where every moment you are present, you are there and you are alive and engaged. It was beautiful. I do it over again in a heartbeat. Well, it was, it was excellent. It was a good bunch of guys. Everybody is really easy to get along with. There's no... Uh, um, Bath between us, nobody, nobody was overbearing. It was excellent. It's, it's hard to find a bunch of guys like that. Everybody's easy going. We all had lots of fun laughs, good jokes. The weather was 
right from calm right to stormy and it, it was excellent. If you ever have a chance, uh, do it. If you have a chance either on your own or with a group of good friends, do it. It's uh, just um, an all-out fun, adventurous, uh, engaging, nature-filled experience. Highly recommended. Throughout the video you have heard one phrase repeated several times, five guys. I would like to echo what these five guys have each expressed so well. These are the very things that I enjoy so much about this trip. The opportunity for men to gather in a wholesome, healthy way to share male camaraderie. To be close to nature, away from the modern conveniences by which we are usually surrounded. And with that in mind, the trip reminds us to be humble and to acknowledge and to embrace the fact that our lives are dictated by the powers of nature and not the other way around. We sail in response to the way that the wind blows. We don't try to change the direction of the wind. And we respond to changes in weather patterns. We do not have the power to change the weather. If these ideas resonate with you, and if you would like to join us next year for the Elbow Run 2016, be sure to get in touch. So let's end with one of Rick's stories. The only joke that comes to mind, it's kind of a sailing joke. Daddy shark and baby shark are swimming around the ocean. All of a sudden they look over and this small boat catches fire, sinks, 10 people in the water, floundering around. Baby shark says, let's go gobble them up, Dad. Daddy shark says, no. He says, follow me. So first they made a big circle and uh, with the fin showing. Then they swam closer and made a small circle around with the fin showing. Then they went and they poked them and then took off and come back and poke them. Pretty soon, Daddy Shark says, now eat them up. So they go eat them up and they're swimming away, kind of enjoying their meal. And Baby Shark says, how come we did all that swimming around before we ate them? He says, well, they're way better once you get all the brown stuff out of them. <laughs> Ha ha ha!